Just love how they show you the chest there as if you're not going to go back and grab it. Lucid ring. Nice. Uh, I assume it's a ward again. Yeah, okay. It's confused proof is a hard one to get in this game, man. Ah, well, there you go. So because, like I say, say we have the mod uh, while we're on the high bridge for the sections we didn't have Kimori, I guess. He still gained sphere levels, but we didn't gain 18 sphere levels. Why does he have so many? Either that's one area where the mod kind of breaks or something. I don't know. Maybe his sphere level requirement doesn't go up every time he gains one or something. That seems a bit off to me. I don't know why he has 18. Actually, no, it's been building up. That's why. Because we're still keeping him on his portion of the grid, um, but we're using purple spheres now. I remember, so we had a he had a build up, yeah. So it's a mix of that. I think I don't think he had 18 before all of this, did he? I'm sure he also picked up the AP that we got on the high bridge. I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah, if he if he did go up, it's because of the mod that I have that gives everybody AP even when they're not in the battle. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. If he had 15 before, he's got three of them for free, even though he wasn't on the high bridge. Okay, what is our purple sphere situation? For now, at least, we're not going to let anybody else use them, so I guess we might as well use some for him, but... I'd rather leave the slots open for now. We could add like a couple more strength nodes or something. That would make a pretty legit difference. Because he's not too far behind. I mean, 29 is still decent. If the highest is 33, he's not too far off. So we'll just have to see. But Titus just continues to be an absolute powerhouse here. Naturally over 3,000 HP. Yeah, for now, I'm not going to backtrack and do lightning dodge stuff, etc. Like, we don't need it. It's the kind of thing where I think when we need it, we'll, we'll come to it. As I've been saying, I think for now, at this stage, we're going to basically push through the story and complete the story if we can. And then once we do that, then we've got so much more stuff to potentially do with the post game. We can try to uh, obviously beat everything in the monster arena. There's still Dark Aeons, all of that kind of stuff. And, well, the, the idea is that we will try our best to keep everybody within their sphere grids and see what is possible uh, if we don't break out. We just have the randomized abilities and we have everybody's own portions of the sphere grid. So then things will get super interesting. Joe, thank you for your permission. <laughs> I'm glad I have it. But for now, we'll, we'll just keep him there. Because I'm still not too sure like which way I want to take him. Because if I do break out, I kind of want to just keep it to one other person's grid. And I think for that, I kind of want to... I want to know like who's the best would be. I'd need to take some time to properly look at it. Because I don't want him to be this kind of wild card where I can just take him around wherever I want. It would just be... It would be a bit unfair. So... Okay. Let's go. Yeah, maybe some of the bosses right towards the end. Like, right now, we're a bit ahead of the curve in terms of our stats. But I think once we start getting to, like, uh, Seymour Flux, you know, Leska, Spectral Keeper, um, Overdrive Sin, uh, Brass is Fine, Leon, Omnis, like, then I think we're going to start to start to see more struggles. How about you do a poll for whose grid he should go to? I feel like it wouldn't be the greatest poll because, like people would need to study <laughs> like I'd need to I'd need to make I don't know a piece of content or something so everyone could see all of the options and study it and make an informed decision I think most people won't make an informed decision on that poll and they'll, they'll just randomly decide someone which I guess is kind of so possible <laughs> but we'll see for now let's just go with it this sesh and we'll see how it goes Sam Yates welcome to stream glad you could catch one Does anyone have steel yet? Is it coming up? Uh, Lulu should have steel. And yes, it is coming up, actually. It's pretty close. So, yeah. I wonder how the randomizer would affect Kimari's solo fight. Yeah, we'll find out. Probably nothing too problematic. We'll see. 
but yeah, in general, it shouldn't affect it too much. The Calmlands. Long ago, the High Summoner spots in here. The road ends here. Beyond, there are no towns, no villages, only endless plains. Many summoners stray from their path and lose their way here. See you later, Joe. Enjoy rebirth. Yeah, we'll have a look at that poll. I've always known where to go. To be fair, there's not even enough options there. There's too many characters. We're only allowed a maximum of four or five options, I think. I... I won't let you die. I'll find a way somehow. After ten, what's your favorite Final Fantasy? Probably seven. OG seven still. In recent years, I've said ten, seven, and six. They're my top three for now. Let's go. Let's go. Tansel I told you, welcome to the stream. I would find a way. I guess I wanted to believe that words could make it come true. One small thing I always liked here is that you can literally see the peaks of Gagazette on the top right. I never really noticed it for many years. Like it's very small, but I kind of like that that you can just see it towering behind the Calmlands. It's a nice touch. Okay, so what are we dealing with here? Fire uh, is something we have to deal with. Lightning, not so much. Maybe poison wood is a good idea. Ah, a lot of people didn't notice it. That's cool. Yeah, it's I, maybe it was a few years ago I first noticed it. I remember sharing it with a few people. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. wonder if I can add anything to this silence proof. <laughs> Michael, thank you for the donation. I'm glad my taste in Fire Fantasy is helping me get paid. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. Yeah, we'll do something along those lines then. We'll see how we go. Are you going to buy the exclusive Magic Counter we'll Buckler? This. Yeah, we could. <laughs> Link saying my name's not Zelda is like Burke saying, having to say my name's not Dan. Yes, indeed. Over the years, it's it's a trap. I, I never I never thought my channel would ever be big enough when I made it back in the day in like 2008 for it to ever be an issue. <laughs> so I just never thought about it really. Fast forward and I was like, oh shit, maybe it wasn't the, the greatest name to give the channel. Um, I don't have any ice magic, I think. And I think these ones are not going to be strong enough to take it out. Yeah, ice magic would have been useful here because it can... Yeah, for anyone wondering where the name Dan's Way came from, I'm going to leave it to the chat because chat's got to know. Just use a flare on it. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, the I've got a decent array of spells, but the ones I kind of need the most, I don't really have them here. A bit crap. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That definitely helps. Um, I still think TKO works here. This is again one of the final areas where TKO can actually get the job done. Kimari has piercing. Thank you, chat, for sharing. <laughs> Sharing the info. <laughs> the name's Skoate. Dan Skoate. Does Kimari not have piercing or is he that weak or is it strong to lightning? Let's have a look. 300 damage was not very much. 
this one can. It does have piercing. Then we'll just go for that. Should rename it to <laughs> Dance 11. And you see, it's funny because if it was, I, I literally would have called it Dance. If I started the channel in 2011, I would have called it Dance 11. And it would have been like, hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? It's Dance 11. Obviously, I've said it thousands of times as Dance 08, so Dance 11 just sounds 10 times stupider, but maybe kind of objectively, they both sound as silly as each other. I really don't know. <laughs> this one is mine. But Dance 11 is just so wrong. <laughs> oh gosh. Thank you for the donation, Nick. How is his... Uh... We don't have steel just yet, but Lulu's going to be able to dismantle these guys soon. Wow, 2,000 from that? That's a that's good. I'm impressed with that. that. Did you ever think that Channel About 5 Fantasy 10 Challenge would have evolved in something like this? Like I said, no, because if I did, I probably would have called it something else. <laughs> and well, it was... The channel was absolutely tiny for so, so long that if it maybe grew really quickly within, say, I don't know, a year or two, then maybe I would have been more inclined to change the channel, but it was such a slow burner. It never really, it's still to this day, the growth has always been relatively steady, like in relative terms. It, no the channel never waste. really had a Let's crazy go. explosion over like six months or a year in that sense. So yeah, I never really thought to change it, honestly. By the time the channel got big enough, I was already kind of like, well, yeah, that's the brand now. It's kind of cool. It's a throwback to how it all began, and at least it's unique. You know, you're not going to run into another Dan's Go 8 on YouTube. So I thought, eh, why not? Thank you for the donation. I love donuts. Yeah, the 24 7 stream w was, of course, huge, but in terms of like my subscriber numbers or the growth of the channel, it didn't really affect things that much. Like, I've been on a pretty linear path for quite a long time. And for me, that's good. That's I think that that's another thing I like about the channel. I think there's a certain amount of difficulties and stress that comes with growing very rapidly as well. So I kind of prefer this kind of slow and steady, where every day kind of feels the same on the channel. But then when you look back after like you know a year, two years, something like that, you realize, oh shit, like I've got another 10,000, 20,000 subs or whatever. So yeah. Perhaps you'd like to know a bit about these planes. Sure. Mm -hmm. For the Machin fans. As you know, these planes were once a battlefield. A great battle between Bavel and Zanakan, a melee of Machina. That war left this place a barren, lifeless land. Then time passed. The summoners took note of this uninhabited land. Great battles could be fought here with no harm to the common folk. Perfect for a final battle with sin, as it were. Summoners wait here, ready to perform the final summoning. Ah, to know what they must feel. In any case, when sin is defeated here, the calm will visit Spira once more. That's why this place is now known as the Calm Lands. Exactly who dubbed it so is unknown. And that, as they say, is that. There's one of his most uh, passionate speeches there. And yes, the channel is approaching 200,000. Again, it's just, it creeps up on you. It's not like when you're growing rapidly, you can race from like 100 to 200 in like a year or something. But for me, um, how long has it been? I think it's been about six years since I hit 100K. And now we're, we're getting close to 200K. And I think it might be actually quite close, like relatively close to when I hit 100k is almost exactly six years so yeah we'll see uh don't exactly have anything planned right now we'll, we'll see i tend to it's like to kind of commemorate the occasion so we'll do something but not exactly sure since i do live streams more regularly anyway now obviously they don't quite feel as special but i need to find something obviously a bit different from the usual um content so we'll see we'll definitely do something 
attack only P Birdman mod. There's the possibilities are endless. We will see. For now, I've got a lot to do with um, with Rebirth being so huge. Um, I want to start Sekiro. I haven't started Sekiro recording yet. I want to start that and hopefully upload uh, most of, if not all of it, before uh, Elden Ring DLC. And so there's uh, there's a lot for me to do. Probably gonna miss. Oh, okay. But yeah, I did read something in the chat about the Final Fantasy X Special Edition of the PS Vita. I would kind of love to have one of those. I lost my um, I lost my Vita like a year ago, year and a half ago, and it's always been one of my favorite devices to play Final Fantasy X on. But now that I have the Steam Deck, that's kind of taken over a lot of my mobile play, and so I don't really miss it as much. But still, I think it's like a kind of a collector's item. It would be kind of nice. But right now, it's just it's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that no one has any ice magic here. I need to see who's got any type of ice magic. Without that, it's a little bit of a struggle. There's a special edition of the PS Vita, not um, Final Fantasy X itself. Yeah, you see, like that's the one thing that the PS Vita version um, of Final Fantasy X has over the Steam Deck. Like, it's so the PS Vita is just so tiny for what it can do that, like, it, compared to the Steam Deck, it's like half the footprint, maybe even less, a third of the footprint, maybe. So you can really just take it everywhere. <laughs> yes, I do have Nolfos. That's also true. So yeah, that's why ultimately it would be nice to have a Vita, because there are going to be times when you just don't want to take something the size of a Steam Deck. But still, like in recent times, the Steam Deck is, is just such a great tool. I, I've, I've sworn by it ever since I first started using it. It's brilliant. Most recently, um, I did play some. I did play Final Fantasy XIII stuff on there. Um, I did some more like Final Fantasy VIII attack only testing, so I can even use it for for stuff that I'm doing on the channel that I want to test and not record, because obviously I can just carry over my saves. Uh, you've got the Steam Cloud saves. I've been playing some Elden Ring. I've just um, it's just such a great machine. The fact that you, that I can play Elden Ring and Final Fantasy VIII on the same machine and stuff like that, it really is just like a mini. It really is like a mini PC. It's it's awesome. Like the range of games that it can cover is is like nothing else. Um, well, nowadays obviously there are more devices like that that can do those things, but in general, it's it's very impressive. Still seems crazy that the North American version had no dark elements. To be fair, the the release version in Japan also didn't, right? I think it was the, that was like later content added to the international version and then uh, the, the European version. I'm pretty sure the release day one in Japan also didn't have Dark Aeons, right? International wasn't released in July 2001 either, was it? So people, basically even people in Japan who brought it on the first day, they didn't have Dark Aeons either, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, this is a bit of a bad situation. Uh, let's use a reflect. The best Fire Fantasy 10 is the P Bird mod version. <laughs> I'm sure if P Bird Man's lurking, uh, he'll enjoy seeing that. He poured his heart and soul into that. And it was a, it was a ton of fun. It's one of the, the most fun series I ever did on the channel.
And yeah, who knows, maybe someday I will combine a challenge with the P-Burn Man mod as well. Yeah, someone, uh, one of the mods, can you guys screenshot that for me, please? I'll send it to P-Burn Man so you can, so can see that. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Don't move. There you go. Take his turn away. <laughs> the way he just got stuck with his mouth open. <laughs> but yeah, it might be a good idea for like a stream series in the future. Just do some kind of um, P Birdman mod challenge and just figure it out as we go along. But to be fair, I would prefer to play the Caribbean mod first, to be fair. Instead of doing a second P Birdman mod thing, I'd rather um, give Caribbean's mod a try. He's contributed a lot to the community as well, and he clearly knows his Final Fantasy X very well, so I have no doubt he's cooked up a really good mod. So that's definitely on the cards. Maybe I will, I will, um, maybe I'll live stream that one if Caribbean agrees to try and kind of be present for it as much as he can. Then at least we'll um, we'll literally have the mod developer himself in the chat. I think that'd be very fun. So I can basically tear apart the mod. Oh god, yeah, the reflect didn't help for that reason, but I'm gonna rely on the TKO here. But yeah, I can rip into Creepian's mod uh, live. Right while he's there. Say it, everything, quote unquote, to his face. Tell him what a terrible mod he's made. So we'll see. What's the current progress on the on the mod, Caribbean? Like, how close are you to having basically a, a public release version? Right, we've got some interesting stuff here, including was this the one? Yeah, this is the only one of its kind in the game. It's, a, it's pretty special. Get your face texture modded onto Titus for a stream. Good lord. That that would look so cursed. I don't think anyone wants to see that. <laughs> that would be hilariously bad. So some interesting things here. I feel like this one is is great value for money. Um sure. It being cursed is why people want it. I'd, ne I'd never hear the end of that. <laughs> I'm on my final retest run and just beat Overdrive Sin, so I have the final dungeon post game bosses to test. That's mostly it. Okay, that's pretty close then. Good stuff. I, I do have quite a lot of gill, so I might be a bit kind of spend my money. So I think we'll buy those. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for now. That's what I would like to buy. Right, let's head towards the central part here. Lulu is getting very close, but she still needs... Ah, Blizzara, that's going to be very useful. Okay, at least then we can deal with the red plans. It's a very hard mod, though, so be forewarned. Yeah, I, I expect nothing less. I'm not afraid of a few game overs. Sheepscope, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. Tanya, see you later. Thank you for joining us. Hope you had a good time. So close to steel, we'll be able to deal with these guys nice and easily. I'm getting my Final Fantasy X tattoo on Saturday. Great time in catching the stream. Nice. What are you getting? Farewell. Is it is it going to be with Yuna by my side? <laughs> Across your chest. Okay, we're still doing fine. Yeah, a cactile tattoo would look pretty cute, I'd say. <laughs> T 
tattoo of Macarena Temple. Aye. He's still got a lot of MP. Surely this could be enough. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Yeah, I still have just the one tattoo in myself, just the the Abe's logo that I have. Uh, the one from like the opening, the loading. I don't know what you call them. Basically, like the intro um, title screens of the game. The red and yellow one. The red, orange, yellow one. With like a galaxy backdrop. I've not added any more. People always say like it's a bit of a bug. Once you have your first tattoo, you start. You always want to get more. But for me, at least, that hasn't happened. Uh, I'm not saying no to getting any more in the future. But for now, at least, that's the only one I have. Yuna doing the sending dance with a wheel of the summon faces behind. Also getting Ichigo from Bleach on sleeve. Nice. Fun fact, Thai Japanese VA is the same as Ichigo's. That's true. I'm actually watching through Bleach for the first time now uh, with my girlfriend. Uh, enjoying it. But that seems like quite an elaborate tattoo. Like the sending dance with a wheel of the summon faces behind. Like That's a lot of work. I'm sure it's going to look awesome. Hopefully it goes well and it turns out how you want it. But yeah, I'm currently on Bleach, like episode 280 or something. Uh, we're, we're skipping the filler. But it has been good fun, especially when you skip the filler, like most of that type of shonen anime. If you can skip the filler, it definitely helps. Part of the reason I wanted to watch it was the whole, like, it, it made a return. Um, like, it carried on the story or something. And I was like, that's quite interesting. So I thought, let me just watch the OG. And then I can follow on with the new stuff that they're doing. Lulu is so close to being able to deal with these guys properly soon. Like, she'll have Blizzara and Steel. <laughs> Get to the attention. Yeah, it has been good fun. I'm just gonna fire off one of these. Let's see how Flair is doing at the moment. 2,200, okay. I mean, for how much MP it takes, it's, it's not that much damage, but we are gonna be able to use like maybe four of them on a full uh, MP thing. Maybe five, actually. Yeah, nice. No, not five, I think still four for now. Speaking of Bleach, Japanese, Seymour Japanese VA also voiced Grimjaw. Wow, okay, that's nice. That's interesting. Are you a sub or a dub person? I uh, always, uh, subtitles, always. Long time no see. You are Yuna? Hmm. You certainly don't look like Mr. Kinox murderer. What you say? Walk, walk a glare. Please, tell us what has happened. Walker's not happy with that. Maester Micah just issued a personal order, you know. It said that you and your guardians murdered Maester Kenok and fled. We are to kill you on sight, or so it says. What of Bavel? Things are calm on the surface, but the depths are turbulent. After the death of Maester Kenok, Kelk Ronso left Yevon. Convenient. Getting around will be easier with Yevon in disarray. But be careful, my friends. You have been branded enemies of Yevon. You should avoid temples for the time being. Thank you, Father Zook, for your warning. Father, you came all the way here just to tell us this? <laughs> to tell the truth, I was a little curious to see... this summoner you are guarding. I hope her pilgrimage goes well. For your sake, too. Thank you, Father. I must be off. I shall pray for all of you.
I do like his voice. It's, like a very, it's quite unique, like he doesn't sound like anyone else in the game. That's always pretty cool. But it is a bit of a random appearance. I guess it helps to set up uh, this section of the game, which does very much uh, focus on Lulu's past and the previous pilgrimages that she was on. <laughs> <laughs> you think Luda would have started at a high level given her experience. Well, maybe that's why her pilgrimages failed. Maybe she, she, was, she didn't really manage to level up very much while she was doing those pilgrimages. Uh, have you listened to any of the Five Fantasy Piano Collections? I think I have, but not, not that much, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, it's, there, there's just so much good Five Fantasy music available. I, I tend to not listen to piano stuff as much. But I think I've heard maybe like 12's one and 10's one in the past. Are you telling me the North American version of the game, he says that we should avoid temples and that we're traitors and stuff, and then we go back to temples and nothing happens? Well, I guess if you try going back to Markalania Temple, something happens. If you try going back to Besaid Temple, something happens. But that's why, as you say, in the North American version, it's it's not as it doesn't make as much sense. But it's also kind of amusing because we've basically done all of the main temples. Like, yes, the Zanakan Dome has been um, kind of, it's become like a temple, holy place or whatever. But most of the temple, basically, it's over anyway, so it's a bit late for that. But, yeah. Who was that? Until half a year ago, he was a summoner. Waka and I were his guardians. <laughs> Lulu had a knowing counter it's kind of a short pilgrimage. <laughs> that makes sense. Law he accurate. gave up halfway. Here, on this plane. Where were his guardians? Now he is a monk at the Bavel Temple. It feels like a concept left over from a time where you'd be able to explore more of Spirit at this point. That seems possible. I think that could be that could be a thing for sure. That's one way to explain it. We will never know, I guess. Messy. What is? Yevon, Micah, and Seymour are not of one mind. Remember what Seymour said last we met. I do not think Micah will concur. She's not stopping, is she? Yuna, she's made her decision. But I can't just let her go. We won't have to. We'll save Yuna even if she calls the final Aeon. But how? Mm, I'll think of a way. Bye, Fancy. Oh, we're still talking. I'm tired of talking to you. Oh damn! Got sassy it's there. always but this, but that. But <laughs> let's think together. Okay. And if we can't think of something, we find another way. Okay. Good plan. But yeah, Final Fantasy X deserves a remake with Final Fantasy X Two Fiends. That I found that quite interesting. Like the, again. There's got to be some kind of modding in the future where they could take, like, enemies from Final Fantasy X to and put them into X. I feel like surely there's enough, like, shared stuff there to, to make that crossover possible, but I don't know. Gagazet is Ronso land. Kimari home. Hmm. Uh, hey, we might meet your family. Kimari has no family. Oh, uh, sorry. But Kimari not alone. <laughs> you see, another brilliant, like small but brilliant moment from Kimari. Kimari has no family, but Kimari's not alone. He's the best man, so underrated. When I was guarding Zook, I already told you this, yeah? About when I was too into the game to be a good guardian. So, when Father Zook said he wanted out, to tell you the truth, I was kind of glad. <laughs> Fair play, man. At least he's honest. Okay, so we've had those conversations. Q not alone for Five Fantasy Nine. <laughs> Good point. Tanya, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Tanya being S Rock T, if anyone doesn't know, one of the Spirit Unplugged mods. She's a very busy mum now, so she's not around as much on the streams as she used to be once upon a time. But always good to see her. There's a chest up here. I'm trying to remember, where did we... 
learn to ride a chocobo again? Did we have to go on foot? It was... We had to go out to... Uh, the west? Right? Northwest, yeah, correct. I think we should get the chocobo at least. Star Innery, welcome to the stream. Oh boy. Okay, this is one of the worst encounters. So to even get the chocobo, we have to go through some of the nasty, nasty stuff here. Um, okay. I think once again, TKO might be able to help us. Uh, let's get some shell on for starters. I think these guys can be poisoned, which helps. This is basically like a boss battle here. Let's see if slow works. Yeah, I could go to the arena first, but for now I just wanna I just want to get the chocobo first. We'll do that stuff eventually. I don't think I want to do much arena stuff because we're more story focused here. Okay, anything else we can do to give them a bad time? Second bio. Dead wife, welcome to the stream. Yeah, that shell's definitely helping, but the, the poison is only a 10% here. So it's going to take a little while, but they shouldn't have the firepower to kill us now. And we'll continue to, to chip here. Anything else? Nah. I mean, we could null shock. But... Yeah, so it does sound like from the chat there is scope to add 10 to enemies to 10, but once again, it's just the modding scene. We're kind of beholden to the amount of people that have the time and the passion to work on this stuff for free, basically. So we'll see if we ever see anything like that. Dark attack. We just got so much HP collectively. How do you not get burned out after doing this one right after the auto attack only challenge? Well, because I set things up in a way where I don't do things back to back. And that's the reason I have like a more slow, methodical way of uploading things. So I'll record stuff and I'll I'll think up a, like a, a release schedule for them and I'll work on them behind the scenes and edit them and prep them and all that kind of stuff. And so by the time, let's say, I'll record all of the attack only content, it will be like three, four months later by the time all of that's come out. And so then when I'm ready to play something again, it's already been like three months, five months, six months or more. And so usually I don't play Final Fantasy X more than like twice a year or something so it's not it's not as much as it sounds for people that are like i don't know speed runners and stuff they've played the game so many more times than i have overall kind of crazy so i don't i'm not playing the game in the way that uh, you think i am just from the uploads alone that's the best way i can explain it so we're going to be patient here until the TKO connects or until Poison kills it, because we're not doing much damage otherwise. When it comes to Burnout, I always think of the people doing Elden Ring content. Like there's, some cha there's some channels that I follow that have been making Elden Ring content for two years straight. And I've basically seen nothing on their channel except Elden Ring for two years. And I'm like... I can't make like like there's no way like even for Final Fantasy X if I was if I did like I don't know six runs of Final Fantasy X a year to be able to make content from it and I was basically uploading Final Fantasy X and nothing else I would be just dead I wouldn't want to play the game again I think after like two years but pe these people they're just continually it's just like run after run after run after run and I'm just like I, I couldn't do that same thing with speedrunners the same reason I don't speedrun games I think it would it would just make me not like the game ultimately anymore after all of that. But for me at least I always say one of the things that keeps it fresh is that I try to play it a different way every time. And so it's if it was just like, you know, 
you do a normal playthrough, you do like a 100% playthrough of the game, and then six months later you're like, hey guys, let's have some fun and do another 100% playthrough of the game. And then six months later you do it again, and obviously there's, there's just a limit to the amount of times you can do that. But for me it's like, you know, you do a challenge, then you do a different challenge, then you do a randomizer run. So I'm always just kind of experiencing the game with new eyes. And so for me at least that really helps uh, keep it alive. Elden Ring is a very different type of game though, where challenge is basically what defines it. Yeah, it's true, but for me it's still, you're still playing the same game for like two years straight and not uploading anything else to your channel. So that's just, I don't think I could do that even if it's something like Elden Ring. Because like for Final Fantasy as well, obviously I'm doing challenge material and even there I'm kind of playing different Final Fantasies, doing different stuff. If I was just doing Final Fantasy 10 challenges even, I think it would take longer for me to burn out. Um, but eventually the same thing would happen. If it was like, I finish a Final Fantasy 10 challenge and I just do one straight after, and I just keep doing that for like two years straight and nothing else, again, I would just burn out, even if they were different every time. So Elden Ring is very special, don't get me wrong. It's one of my favorite games of all time, but I, I couldn't see myself playing it for two years straight and just not uploading anything else on, on my channel. Like that's It takes a different level of dedication and passion for the game that I just don't have. So yeah, if there's one thing I'm generally, I think I'm pretty good at, is, is just pacing myself and avoiding burnout. And I think that's another reason I've been able to kind of do this thing for so long. It definitely makes a difference. Oh, it's just not enough. Fine. Um... Just make sure it dies. These guys are hard to kill. Um, do we have any kind of... I think Yuna might have some kind of sleep attack or something. Silence, delay... I would like I would have liked to have done some more Elden Ring stuff on the channel, honestly, other than the playthrough. I enjoyed the game so much. That part of me kinda of wishes I, I jumped in even more and just did like more um, like challenge material or found some other interesting stuff, but the LP was just so huge and took so long to upload. <laughs> like I've been trying to do a um, room level one playthrough behind the scenes. Just like my own time on the Steam Deck and stuff. It's been a lot of fun. But yeah, I'm kind of struggling against these guys. They're hard to they're hard to kill. I think I'll sacrifice Waka here. There we go. Yeah, had to do that. I need to get that wolf out of there. It's too quick. Does Demi work? Nick, thank you for the donation. 566, six, that's not too bad. That's it, that's what I was looking for. Captain Morgan, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining us. And Yuna stayed asleep for ages. Does it really take that long? Let's end this. She has no fire, but maybe she can do that. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, that, that game is just so giant that it would just dominate way too much time on the channel. Uh, it's one of those I'm trying in, ge in general to avoid games of that scale. They're just so difficult to upload for, for the way I do things at least. What I do want to do with Baldur's Gate 3 though is because I'm doing a... Um, I'm doing a Dungeons and Dragons run with uh, some of the Spear Unplugged mods, and I'm having a really fun time with that. Uh, I want to try and do like a co-op kind of playthrough with some of the the mods. Like once crossplay is made available, hopefully it will be. They said they they said that it would be. Um, I'd like to to do a run with those guys. 
yeah, Witcher 3 kind of falls into that. I already played Witcher 3 now. I did it in my own time. I thought I procrastinated so much about Witcher 3. Uh, I'm kind of glad I did it in the end. Otherwise, I probably just wouldn't have got around to playing it. So, yeah, really thought Witcher 3 was excellent. Really, really good game. Okay, let's do that. Let me train one. Yeah, to be fair, I haven't done the Witcher 3 DLCs yet. That's something, again, I'm saving for the future, but I'd like to do that. So, here we go. <laughs> I'm not going to do, like, the full-on race, but I just want to train one so I can ride a chocobo, and that's it. Yeah, I almost accidentally triggered the, the DLC when I was looking for something else. Turned back at the last minute. Okay. Sometimes I find these challenges harder than like the actual race. It can be very erratic, and sometimes you just kind of miss the goalposts if they really want to go off in a different direction. Almost did. <laughs> just about. Super cool, welcome to the stream. Right, so yeah, we're not gonna do the whole thing here. Um, we'll be back for that later, for now. We just do this. Explore around a little bit, if there's anything to grab. I think there's like a couple of chests and stuff that we can get. Um, is it worth doing the Remian Chocobo race now? What do you guys think? Do you want me to go to Remiem first and do try and do like the Chocobo race thing there? I want to kind of leave the, the monster arena stuff for now. I, to me, that's just more like post-game stuff. I want to stick more to story. Do you want to get all the celestial weapons? Eventually, yeah, I probably do. But uh, for now, for the story, as I say, like the plan is to, f to push through with the story, mostly. And then when we're ready to try and take on some more difficult stuff, then I'm, I'm probably going to need those Celestials to help me out. So I'll come back for them later. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that important um, in Remium, but let's just give it a quick go anyway. <laughs> there's a primer there, true. We're not too worried about primers, I don't really I don't really mind if I miss them. Yeah, I didn't really play any Gwent in uh, Witcher 3. Always thought this was one of the coolest looking temples, like these like this really incredibly deep hole here and then like these incredibly tall pillars holding up all of this stuff like the design is just super nice I still feel like eventually they must have they must have like had a different purpose for this place originally maybe it's hard to believe that like this was the goal all along for this <laughs> yeah you do get like um, if you get the um, underdog secret I think it was. You can definitely mix some powerful stuff with that. Yeah, the last time I did the Chocobo race for the Celestial Weapon, I literally did it in like three attempts or four attempts or something. I'm sure some of you guys watched that a few years back for the P-Birdman mod. When I was trying to get the Celestials, I got it like super fast. I think I have to go to the other one first. Let me speed this up. You have to do that first. Yeah, I thought we were talking about primers. That's why I mentioned Underdog Secret. I thought, like, the reason to get all of the primers, obviously, is to get the Underdog Secrets. But for this one, yes, you can get Wings of Discovery. 
but I don't remember the route. There's like kind of optimized routes to get the most stuff. I really don't remember. Let's just give it a go. So I think you have to win the race first, right? Before you can get any extra stuff. Like the first win is its own thing. It's definitely been a while. So I'm not going to worry too much about getting like an optimal route. I just want to get to the end and win the race first. I think you don't have to do anything fancy for that. Did you also get pendulums for like a certain amount of chests in this one? But I always say my favorite chocobos in the franchise are like just like look wise it's um the 13 chocobos i think they're great they're the best looking ones also don't remember if the prize is stacked like if you open three chests or four chests do you get everything before it as well i don't remember that stuff so we'll spend a little bit of time here it's, it's not essential at the moment I just love like the kind of the locks that they have down the side on 30. They're really cool. Oh, they do stack. Okay, fine. Oh well, we just did the one first. Mixer, four chests for 30 pendulums. Is is it three chests for the wings to discovery? I might just do that one, honestly. But from here, what we're going to do once we're done with this, I won't spend too much time here. Uh, we'll head to um, Cavern of the Stolen Faith. Let's see more of Lulu's story. Find some more enemies. It's still there's still a popular misconception that it's random how fast the other Chocobo goes. Ah, well, I didn't really know. So you're saying that it always it's always the same speed? Yeah, I went the wrong way. I didn't remember what to do after those first three. <laughs> Damn it. That one. So is that a fixed pace speed? The other one? It's not random, it's predetermined. Its speed changes at various points along the race track depending on how many chests you've picked up by that time. Ah, that's interesting. Definitely didn't know that. So three chests should be pretty easy. I just accidentally clipped a pole there when I was looking around for where to go. But the first three chests are pretty easy. Creeping in your mod, did you make any changes to anything other than literally what happens like in battle or in like items menu? So I'm talking about, I don't know, like Blitzball or any mini games or how you get the celestial weapons or is it kind of like P Birdman's in that it mostly just focuses on that stuff? Because a lot of people, obviously, while I was playing the P. Birdman mod, they were asking me, like, oh, so is Blitzball more challenging now? And all that kind of stuff. Like, did you change the stats for certain players, etc.? So it's a pretty clear win with three chests as well. So I think we can break the HP limit now if we wanted to. I removed basically all gameplay rewards from minigames. That's just me. These modders are so mean. But what about like changing Blitzer stats and stuff like that? I don't know. Made the Albed sites like give Nimrook like 20 catch, 21 catch base instead. <laughs> Just troll the players. Or like make the, the final against the goers uh, even more difficult. Like the goers uh, sign Nimrook last minute. <laughs> clip the pole. So after these three, I'm, I'm not sure um, which one's the best thing to get, but I 
went the wrong way again. You need to keep going round and then get this one. I think this is how you get four, but I need to do it correctly, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll try it one more time. If I don't get the pendulums, it's not a big deal. I don't super duper need it. It's not worth taking too much time on this. But the Chocobo theme is another one that I kind of just don't really get bored of. Certain themes, like when you just have a good solid theme, it just makes grindy stuff so much more bearable. But yeah, it does seem like the Final Fantasy X modding scene still has, still has a ways to go. It's going to be quite tight, I think. Oh, there we go, just about. Got it. <laughs> Make the kid the ball, yes. <laughs> that mod is brilliant. If anyone doesn't know about that, there's a... I don't make many YouTube shorts, but when I do, I try to make them like good and fun. And I, I took a, a small cutscene. And uh, but yeah, it has the, the mod where any blitz balls in the game become uh, the kid who wants to be a blitz ball. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. You should definitely check it out if you haven't. It's absolutely brilliant. Okay. Let's get out of here. Picked up a few extra goodies. And now we can start heading towards Defender X. To be honest, we didn't end up getting steel. We didn't really get many sphere levels. Lulu still needs probably like another three or four. Three at least, I think. We'll get there. Gagazette's a pretty good place to steal. <laughs> I don't know why, why people have this idea of trying to put my face in the game, but... <laughs> Thank God I don't show my face too much on the channel. Got that one already. Right. Um, I think we're just going to completely bypass the arena for now. Just want to check this bit as well quickly. And then we'll move on. I thought this scene was a was a bit random. Like it's not voice acted, but like they do this whole thing, it's kinda interesting. I feel like they should have just put Machen here instead. And while he's talking, maybe use some of these scenes while he's narrating. It's kinda weird. I don't know. The fact that it's not voice acted, I think, is what makes it weird for me. Like, they've got the high production scenes. And then, and the music kicking in and stuff. It's a weird one. It's almost like it kind of got left in, and or it wasn't completed or something. I don't know. Always struck me as a little strange. Alright, on we go. Got about an hour or so left of the stream. Oh my god. At this rate, I have a feeling I'm going to see my face on a blitz ball in this game. I do not give permission for my face to be used as a blitz ball in this game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she needs some HP badly. <laughs> if you want me to go.
I don't think I've ever seen... Has, have you guys ever seen a mod of any kind? It could be like a mod for 7 Remake or 10 or 12 or 13 or whatever games are being modded where someone's kind of put someone else completely in the game, like themselves or like someone in real life. They've tried to mod them into the game. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like that for these games before. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so definitely some wacky mod ideas flying around in the chat. Right. I think with this guy, Provoke was a good idea. I think that basically just wins you the fight, from what I remember. Yeah, I've definitely seen model swaps. Um, so, like, for example, you swap Cloud with Sephiroth or whatever, but in terms of literally putting someone in real life, like taking a photo or creating some kind of 3D render of someone real and then putting them into the game and stuff, I've never seen that before. 